Hello and welcome to Sunday morning service here at Parkstone Baptist Church in Poole, Dorset in the UK uh, on this Sunday 5th of July and at the moment there's a little bit of sun uh, in and out, uh, the wind is picking up, uh, it could be a bit blowy out there and uh, doubtless the um, autofocus which I can't do anything about on a tablet uh, will be in and out all the time making you wonder whether you've uh, well had some strong drink or something else uh, in the course of the morning but you have not welcome in the name of the God of love Father Son and Holy Spirit and we meet not in COVID-19 but in Christ Jesus our Lord as the psalm says, give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his love endures forever. And the Lord, whose love reaches to the heavens and whose faithfulness reaches to the skies, be with you. God sends his love and faithfulness. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. Amen. In the first part of Sunday morning service, we turn to God in prayer, following on from the Psalms and the call to worship. And we pray, as we have been praying over these last weeks, now months, our God and Father, in worship, whether together or apart, May we know we are in your presence and that your love binds us together in one human family. Apart rather than gathered on this Lord's day, this day of life and light, may we trust that nothing in all creation will ever separate us from your love in Christ Jesus our Lord, who for our sakes died and rose again. Alleluia. And in the power of the Holy Spirit, through our Lord Jesus Christ, let us pray with full assurance of faith to the Father. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours forever and ever amen and we pray today for medical workers in particular but for others too um, and we pray as you'll see mindful of those folks in our world for whom our present reality which is new and strange to us is something really of every day and of every month and of every year of their lives to them and this is a prayer prayer that's adapted from a prayer of Christian aids. We pray. Restoring and healing God, thank you for medical workers who embody sacrificial love in these challenging times, putting the welfare of others before their own, staying away from family and loved ones, comforting the concerned and bereaved, reassuring the anxious and vulnerable, working to heal and, and restore people who are ill, be their guide, strength, wisdom and hope. We pray for those in authority to do right by them, for proper protective equipment to be provided and for their dedication to be met with much gratitude and appreciation when they return home exhausted 
and not blame them for their own faults and failings. And we pray for medical workers around the world where resources and protective equipment are always in short supply and where diseases that barely touch us touch many not only now but always. And may these extraordinary times, uh, compared to our own ordinary times, uh, lead to deep, necessary and urgent changes in how our world works, resulting in a genuine effort to address the profound injustice of life expectancy being determined by geography or poverty or ethnicity, and to awaken us all to the reality of how connected we all are in this one world and one human family. And so, to work together to create the community and kinder, kinder world we all want and need to be part of. So help us, O oh God, for the sake of the Son who gave his life to all. Amen. And as we move from prayer to the word of the Lord, we encounter actually a, another prayer. Uh, it's the one that we began to look at last Sunday morning, Psalm 130, that I read to you now. Out of the depths I cry to you, O Lord. O Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my pleas for mercy. If you, O Lord, should mark, in, mark iniquities, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, that you may be feared. I wait for the Lord, my soul waits, and in his word I hope. My soul waits for the Lord more than watchman for the morning, more than, more than, more than watchman for the morning. O Israel, hope in, hope in the Lord, for with the Lord there is steadfast love, and with him is plentiful redemption, and he will redeem Israel from all his iniquities. Out of the depths I cry to you. Calm yourself. Breathe out slowly. Take in a deep breath and hold it. Ready for the plunge? How many of the Bible's cries from actual depths can you name before coming up gasping for air? If you prefer, think first and then do your deep breathing and breathe out those names on a single breath. I managed Jonah from the belly of the fish, Jeremiah from the bottom of a well, Joseph from prison, Gideon from the bottom of the wine press, David from the depths of a cave, Daniel from the lion's den, Paul and Silas from Philippi's deepest dungeon, John from the salt mines of Patmos, and I've got a tiny bit more. There is more than a lungful of deep down criers in the Bible. And add to thee those, those who cry to the Lord from not actual deep places, but no less real depths, and I've not enough puff. Jochebed, Hannah, Naomi, Ruth, Elijah, Moses, Samson, Jehoshaphat, Hezekiah, Job, and so on and so on. And that's without the blind man sat by the road, sat by the side of the road, the ten men not blinded but blighted by leprosy, the twelve in a boat believing they're about to drown, the man blinded in a flash who's about to see the light. Acts 9.12, and in a garden and on a cross, God's own Son. Out of the depths arise the sound of many voices, a clamour of cries, a waterfall of weeping and wailing. And the Lord heard each one as the Lord heard them all. God sees, God hears as we've remembered these last weeks and thanks to that story of Hagar that we spent a couple of Sundays looking at we know that God sees our plight and hears our cry before we even cry to him 
as this is the case, it may seem superfluous for the psalmist to say my text for today. O oh Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to my cry for mercy. Except that the plea has a pedigree. Hope has a hinterland. When King Solomon offered to the Lord the temple he'd built, he publicly got down on his knees on a highly polished, shining like the sun platform stage in front of all the people. He spread his arms high and wide in prayer and blessed the God who keeps his word. And out of this blessed assurance of God's promised love, Solomon humbly asked the Lord to hear his people's cry whenever they prayed towards this place that signified God's promised presence with his people wherever they were and in whatever state they were in. There they would find his mercy and his provision for them. It's, it's a profoundly moving, all-embracing prayer. Too long to read now for our video but it's worth the read here's the request at its heart you can find it in 2 chronicles chapter 6 and these verses verses 19 to 21 give attention to your servant's prayer says solomon and his plea for mercy o lord my god hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence may your eyes be open towards this temple day and night this place of which you said you would put your name there may you hear the prayer your servant prays towards this place hear the supplications of your servant and of your people towards this place hear from heaven your dwelling place and when you hear forgive god sees god hears yes he does yes he will jacob once offered joseph a coat of many colors solomon once offered god a prayer of many dimensions and it's remarkable for those dimensions just look at this prayer's breadth solomon's prayer embraces not only the people of Israel but also migrants and the places migrants and refugees asylum seekers come from in fact Solomon takes his prayer out from a temple and out of a local national concern for Israel his people into the world and a global and universal concern that verse 33 of 2 Chronicles 6 uh, that all the peoples of the earth may know your name and revere you just as your own people do. It's the prayer that Jesus will come and give his people a thousand years later. Father, hallowed be your name on earth as in heaven by all and by everyone. And it's the gospel task we carry out until the end of the age so that all may call on God as their father and as their saviour. Uh, as Matthew 28 19 and Jesus great commission to his church and people uh, says so there's this prayer's immense and extensive breadth but there's also its its depth its its very intensive depth Solomon analyzes many problems that prompt and provoke that that squeeze prayer uh, from human hearts and minds and lips at the root often not always but often Solomon detects people turning away from God and turning away from others in short sin in Old Testament terms people who forget the Lord's covenant of steadfast love forget his covenants reminder plan and you can read all about it in Deuteronomy chapter 28 verses 15 to 68 But if God wouldn't abandon his people Israel when they abandoned him, what those words of God through Moses suggest is that he would work the mightier to bring them back. 
the covenant warnings in operation might seem very much like God's absence from his people. You know, read them through, famine, conquest, plague, etc., etc. But they signalled God's presence. God was calling, ready to receive his repenting, returning people and rescue and restore them, in short, forgive. And this means that when Solomon prayed for his people, he wasn't making it up, nor suffering an over-anxious imagining of future threat. Instead, Solomon faced the fact of the fickleness of his own heart and of his people's and prayed back to God in front of his people God's faithfulness to the promise God had made them long ago. And just see not only this prayer's breadth and depth, but its length. It reaches beyond Israel's golden age in Solomon's time. In reality, all that glitters is not gold. Um, but Solomon's prayer reaches to the extreme limits of the covenant warnings. Israel handed over to a foreign power that takes the nation back to another Egypt in some other land to find God's promised love to his people even there far from the temple and their land. Hundreds of years later when the kingdoms of Israel and Judah lived through and lived out the last of the warnings Daniel in Babylon and Nehemiah in Persia and Salmus and prophets recalled God's promise and prayed and preached Solomon's prayer, the prayer which at its heart was God's promised love to his people, as he called them back to himself. And let's not forget the height of Solomon's prayer. In verse 14 of chapter 6 of 2 Chronicles, O Lord, God of Israel, there is no God like you, in heaven or on earth, you who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way. Solomon's prayer plumbs the depths of what people do and, and what they get to when they reject their creator and their, and their redeemer. But his prayer is confident from first to last of the heights of God's faithfulness and love, his compassion and mercy. God promised, so Solomon prayed. Solomon prayed and God heard as promised. We hear God's Amen to Solomon's prayer in the next chapter of 2 Chronicles, chapter 7 verses 12 to 16. It arrived in the night. I have heard your prayer. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command locusts to devour the land, or send a plague to my people, if my people, who are called by my name, will humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and heal their land. Now my eyes will be open and my ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Now listen to Nehemiah, a Jew, whose family was caught up in the fall of Jerusalem and taken captive to Babylon, who, while serving the king of Persia, receives news of the desolate ruin that was Jerusalem, and who weeps and prays uh, for days, and from these depths, Praise in Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 5 following, O Lord, God of heaven, the great and awesome God, who keeps his covenant of love with those who love him and keep his commands, let your ears be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself and my father's house, have committed against you. Did you hear the echo from a faraway land 
of the day Solomon prayed. Nehemiah prayed towards the one person who has promised to give attention to his people's cry, even and especially when it comes up from the depths. And our Psalm 130 echoes Solomon's prayer and Nehemiah's prayer and the promise of God from which both prayers were given the strong wings, the strong winds did I say, the strong wings. There's a great big wood pigeon looking at me from the bird table now. He's just been eating all the food for the sparrows and robins. But anyway, the promise of God from which both prayers were given the strong wings of faith and hope and love to rise up from the depths to the heights of heaven. The wood pigeon is paying me tremendous attention. It reminds me of my early days of preaching when in the first couple of hours of work on the farm uh, cleaning out all the pig stems sorry big pig stalls and stalls and pens uh, I, I would I would practice my preaching and speaking upon thousands and thousands of uh, pigs why is a wood pig a wood pigeon out there listening to me now that's got me well and truly off the point so I come back to it there's a question that's begging to be asked if God is so willing to listen, why did Solomon make such a thing of asking God to listen? If God's so willing to listen, why did Solomon make such a thing of asking God to listen? He had a shiny bronze platform built, a stage with a square top just over a socially distanced encounter from side to side and a few feet off the ground. The king made an exhibition of himself when he mounted the bronze box and got down on his knees and spread his hands towards the heavens. He prayed for a long time in what I think would have been a carefully considered painstakingly rehearsed and thought through way that was a history lesson from the past with a message for the future to everyone present. In fact it was a deeply theological lesson but, and he concluded, Now, my God, may your eyes be open and your ears attentive to the prayers offered in this place. Attentive. If God were like some of his servants in a church service, he'd have long nodded off somewhere along that long prayer. Instead, God came back to Solomon and gave, at night, a considered answer to Solomon's considered prayer. Now, did God need to be told or Solomon told him? Didn't Solomon more or less repeat God's own words back to him? Uh, does the God who sees and hears need to be asked to listen and to look? Why did Solomon make such a thing of it? Why did it have to be such a performance and so public? Shouldn't it be more like what the apocryphal deacon told the apocryphal nervous preacher? When I say so, stand up, speak up and shut up. And shouldn't, have, shouldn't it have been even like what Jesus said? Go to your room and shut your door. But Jesus countered prayer that was no more than a performance to impress others of one's piety. Solomon's public prayer wasn't intended to impress God or man, woman or child with his, I know, his, his ability, his, his vo prayer vocabulary, his uh, spirituality, his earnestness or any of those things, but it made an impression. Solomon's prayer, so public, left an indelible mark. It turns out, uh, that that the first thing to do, the real thing to do, the good thing to do, while it may not be the only thing to do, is to pray, is to turn to God, to face him and cry out to him. Because God sees, God hears, God listens, God response. Prayer is not opium for poor dupes, as some have liked to say and still say in their own, own sort of ways. 
prayer is the first step from, shall I say, dukedom to freedom. We start praying for our lives when we stop playing at life and get real. Yes, Solomon prayed for God's ear, but his prayer wasn't for God's ears only. It was for his people's hearts, for their minds. Yes, God wants his people to continue wholeheartedly in his way. But if not, there is a way back, and the way back is God. And Solomon, who was not always a model man or a model leader, a model husband, a model king, modelled on his knees for all to see the way to continue wholeheartedly in God's way and modelled with his pleas and prayers the way back when we've gone astray, when we've walked away. You see, God is always more ready to hear us say his name than we are. The question isn't so much, will God listen when I pray, as will I pray? Will I pray? Solomon showed the way. There have been calls lately for some great national day of celebration for having come through this season of coronavirus or whatever. Personally, I have to say, I think and have thought for quite some time, really from the beginning, that a day of lamentation would be more in order. If you read the supplement that accompanies today's service, you can find it on our uh, find it on our website. Um, it's certainly been mailed out by post or by email to our own church church's congregation. Uh, you'll see why Solomon's prayer uh, a long time ago, three thousand years ago or thereabouts, a sermon in the Crystal Palace in London in October 1857 and what I've tried to say today might point the better way to having a song and a dance and a drink and a shout and a whole bunch of fireworks or whatever is done in the name of celebration. Uh, but I'll leave you to read that for yourselves and, and I hope you take that chance because not only is it an amazing story in its own right but I think it's a story that speaks profoundly to this time and season in which we find ourselves today but mindful of this God who is always more willing to hear us than we are to speak to him Let's pray these words. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than either we desire or deserve. Pour down upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. And that prayer that I've long cherished uh, derives from the Book of Common Prayer. So in coming towards a close this morning, words of the Apostle Paul followed by a prayer from Christian Aid and then what we pray together uh, at some point on these Sunday mornings in this season of coronavirus in which we are not in COVID-19 but we are in Christ Jesus our Lord and through him and in him able to approach God as our Father in heaven and cry out to him from the depths, from the heights or in any place in between where we find ourselves to be. For I'm convinced, Paul writes, 
that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come how's that four dimensions will be able to separate us from the love of god in christ jesus our lord god of heaven and earth in these times of isolation apart from loved ones distant from friends away from neighbors thank you that there is nothing in all of creation not even coronavirus that is able to separate us from your love and may your love that never fails continue to be shared through the kindness of strangers looking out for each other for neighbors near and far uh, through all recognizing our shared vulnerability each of us grateful for every breath and willing everyone to know the gift of a full and healthy life keep us all in your care amen and so united in christ through the fellowship of the spirit may we continue to rejoice in the love that conquers all in the faith that overcomes all and in the hope for all who come and put their trust in you through jesus christ our living lord amen and we embrace one another um, as we pray may the grace of the lord jesus christ and the love of god and the fellowship of the holy spirit be with you all amen and thank you for being with me in sunday morning service uh, today uh, there'll be more news as we go along as how we'll be returning to a church service in the church building at long last uh, but we'll be doing that uh, carefully as we'll be picking up other things carefully too and all the time mindful of all those others who may not be able to return and to get back into activities and into many aspects of normal everyday life anytime soon so we will try to make this journey together we will want to uh, stay together we'll want to pray for each other uh, and show uh, the world and each other that we do love one another uh, because we know the love of our god and we're trying our very best in the power of the spirit and in the grace of the lord jesus christ uh, to carry out his command of love and above all to love him himself with all our heart all our soul all our mind and all our strength so be god so god be with you as we go separate ways uh, farewell for now and until we meet again goodbye and god bless <laughs>